Cast in a casteless language by Rita Kothari. Now the very title itself signifies of being cast or trapped in a casteless language. It can either mean being trapped or it can also mean to be put into or to be represented in a casteless language. And the language of course is English. Rita Kothari, a well-known English language author, translator and professor from Gujarat. She has written several books. The main themes she writes on are about partition and its effect. And she also tries to attempt um, to preserve her memories and her identity as a member of the Sindhi people. Some of her notable works, Translating India, published in 2003, Memories and Movements, 2016, and Raja Dhiraj as King of Kings, 2019. Now, the essay that we are dealing with, cast in a casteless language, basically talks about the relationship between the caste system in India and the colonial language, English. The entire essay, as you see here on the slide, is divided into 10 parts. We go on discussing each part in detail. Homogenizing or heterogenizing the archive. Now in this section, Kothari talks about three Dalit writers and the three different languages they have written in and the three different regions they come from. <clears throat> in spite of the differences in their language, uh, in their region and um, in their identity, they all have the same story of dejection and exclusion. So that is common among all these three Dalit writers. You have Sharan Kumar Limbale, Bhama, and also Om Prakash Valmiki. Now Limbale hails from, um, is a Marathi. Uh, he, his Marathi is not as same as the Marathi spoken by the upper caste Marathis. He is a hybrid, he is a son of an upper caste father and a lower caste mother. And thus he experiences a different dimension of sexual and gender politics. He is not a complete Dalit, but he is a half Dalit. Uh, right now he is a regional director of uh, an university in Mumbai and he writes in Marathi. Bama, of course, is another writer that Kothari talks about in this section. Um, Bahama too faces the same challenges like Limbali. Um, Bahama completely uh, gets misplaced from Hinduism to she is um, she changes to Christianity and she also critiques the Christian missions. Um, because in in that too she finds dejection she does not find equality she writes in tamil and she's a teacher at present om prakash valmiki the third dalit writer um, asserts his distance and exclusion from hinduism and um, he adopts his name, last name Valmiki. Again, a Dalit writer uh, who has faced many dejections because of his Dalit identity. At present, he is an ordinance officer in Dehradun. Now, each of these writers and their autobiographies, respectively, Limbale is Akarmashi. Bhama's Karga and Valmiki's Chudan 
they all are individual narratives of struggle and articulation of that struggle their autobiographies and their experiences actually challenge the idea of india and its unf- unfinished modernity how modern has india become when we have when we have a group of people even today um facing innumerable challenges because of their identity so this new archive of dalit writing in english or translations into english forms the basis of this essay now the archive has a forced homogeneity imposed by the term dalit here it embraces a homogeneity um which is assumed if you are a dalit these are the experiences that you go through all dalits have the same experience that is a homogeneity that the society imposes on the so called dalit experience now kothari points out that dalit identities face different experiences um they go through different challenges with respect to their or respective of their region respective of their language the homogeneity is also considered by the fact that the translated texts are in an international language now in that way yes all these texts limbale bama and valmiki's texts are translated into english in that way there is a common feature among these dalit writings other than that they all have their own story to say now kothari in the second section issues and arguments talks about how uh the relationship between caste and english language are two different phenomena which very well comes together when you go through the 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 dalit writings and their translations into english now in india we know caste is an institution that defines tradition inheritance and when this is combined through translation with a modern secular discourse of english language kothari says that some dalits do acknowledge the fact that this is a very good combination a combination of um caste system with a secular discourse of english language the dalit writers appear to accept english as a target language despite the fact that there can be or there are many local realities and many experiences of caste which is difficult to put into a colonial language because english language has no memory of caste english language do not have words that talk much about caste the language does not have um a huge repertoire of words which actually describe the variations of experience that a dalit has to go through on a day to day basis now the discussion shows how english promises to dalit writer at least in theory it gives them a sense of community agency articulation recognition and justice so these are the factors or these are the features that english language provides the dalit writers and that is why translate translating into english or writing in english um lures these dalit writers even though the inherent inadequacies of english as a target language of translation for dalit literature even though it is inadequate even though the english language is inadequate for the dalit experience yet it is compensated by being a language of global dissemination so it gives them a huge global platform when their works are translated into english so it gives them an agency it gives them 
um, a voice it gives them a medium through which their experiences can be placed on a global platform so in all these ways the dalit writers get a huge recognition which their own language cannot give them and thus she says that english as a language of empowerment also builds upon its castlessness as a marked strength so even though english lacks um english as a discourse lacks uh you know lack, uh, lacks the experience of caste yet all its inadequacies are covered up by uh this delivering by delivering the sense of empowerment to the dalits now best example that she cites here is about the gujarati dalit writer nirav patel now nirav patel raises some very important questions in this respect kothari wants the reader that patel's view is not a representative of all the dalits in india this is is this is his own view his personal perspective about writing and translating into english now um patel patel's case stems as much from the empowering nature of english uh, as the stigmatizing nature and when compared to the stigmatizing nature of his own gujarati because according to patel in gujarat there are two types of gujaratis which are talked one is the gujarati with capital g which is often talked by the elite class and the other gujarati is referred to with a small g and that is often used by the uh, lower class or by the dalits so he argues that um standard gujarati or the elite gujarati which of course is considered as standard gujarati is as distant and alien to dalits as english so their own language gujarati spoken by the elite is as distant as the colonial language english so he says when you have two languages which are very distant from you you would rather choose or embrace the language which gives you power which gives you a global voice which puts your story on a global platform so he says in this way he would rather embrace english and replace his mother tongue you know and thus he makes a new concept called foster tongue foster is um you know adopted tongue so he says for a dalit in gujarat writing in standard gujarati has no use to them rather it would be much better if they could write in english because that that could give them a global um, standing so by being foreign english does not normalize and legitimize uh, legitimize caste and by being an ex colonial language with global reach it becomes empowering so its foreignness actually helps the dalits to um to express their voice their experiences on a global platform now dalit literature in india if you see has emerged in tandem with the caste protest in various states now here because kothari is a gujarati she talks more about her own state gujarat and she says that it stemmed the dalit writing stemmed in gujarat after the upper castes went on a rampage to protest against the affirmative action for the dalits in maharashtra on the other hand where it has its seeds and strongest constituency the dalit writers the literature by dalits triggered off the political struggle against caste so in maharashtra in gujarat in all these states dalit writing were a product of the protest done mainly by the upper caste 
for the Dalits. Now engaged in writing about their lives, the writers very often do so uh, by reflecting the problems that they face themselves and also the problems that they see around themselves. And this includes not only the upper caste, um, you know, the upper caste, um, um, what do you say, the, the, the upper caste torture, but also the humiliation of the entire community they belong to. So they have this huge discomfort in themselves when they think about their own community. It is so much engraved in them, the caste hegemony, that uh, they feel quite ashamed of their own community. It is in this scenario that the, the Dalit writers slowly starts to protest. In most states, the upper caste also um, goes with them for protesting with the Dalits. And the Dalit writers are involved or they get involved in the grassroots movements. And thus, many of the Dalit writers, they get into the task of writing autobiographies. Why autobiographies? Because it talks about their own real life challenges as a Dalit. The candid nature of the autobiographies that have come into English clearly show that the writing of such autobiographies must have been an act of courage. So these Dalit auto autobiographies were an act of courage, braveness, boldness and of course it was also an act of representing what these people were going through. Now, for instance, the author Kishore Shantabai created a storm in Maharashtra by describing how his experience as the son of a Tamasha dancer, of how he was um, sexually exploited and how uh, eventually he first wanted to write in Marathi and then he wrote his autobiography in English. He brought to the readers who considered Tamasha or dancing uh, merely as an innocent form of a vernacular dance in Maharashtra. None of them knew that or most of them did not know that there was a sexual and a caste politics behind the Tamasha dancers. So after the publication of um, Shantabai's autobiography, he also set up counseling centers for Tamasha dancers to raise awareness about AIDS and sexual exploitation. So the autobiography proudly uses the mother's name as a middle name, uh, the autobiographer. And he makes a political statement about the community to which his mother belonged. So. Above the above very often positions Dalit literature as authentic and untold stories, you know, uh, particularly the true autobiographies, the true stories of lived human lives. When it is brought out into English, it gets a wide dissemination. So the writers of autobiographies, they take up the burden of representation and they arguably appear as translators of their own. Now by being translated into English thereby, they find an audience outside their local language community. And thus the Dalit writer becomes independent of the local politics. Now, um, in such a situation, Chandu Maharia writes, another Dalit writer writes that we are able to bypass local politics and create a more neutral place for ourselves. So this is what English translation, so writing in English provides a Dalit writer with. 
Another writer from Gujarat, Sahil Parmar, mentions that two issues of corruption and caste need to be internationalized and that is possible only through English language. Meena Kandasamy also talks about the technologies of English and cyber media wherein she says that in her blog she says that big media houses which own the major publications only rarely give opportunity to Dalit writers and thus there's an absence of Dalit writers who write in English. The elitist writers want to write the feel-good stuff, India's shining myths and that's the work that gets into print. So I wanted to tap the power and enormous outreach of the internet. So there are Dalits who have reached out into the cyberspace to bring out their story. And such people are called, according to Meena Kandasamy, as cyber savvy Dalits who have the internet for campaigning against cases of atrocities and making boundaries between civil society and political society porous. And she also says that Dalits can explore what it means to be a Dalit and what it means not to be a Dalit through the cyberspace. That's again another option that the Dalit have in order to bring across their stories. Now, Kothari also acknowledges the contributions done by Ambedkar. She feels that B.R. Ambedkar was a towering figure who not only imposed a pan-Indian unity upon Dalits, but he also has specific contributions to make uh, to three important aspects, telling stories, Dalit stories, the English language and translation. Now, Ambedkar carved a tradition of self-expression, laying emphasis upon the content of suffering rather than on the language chosen for the purpose of self-expression. So, he was one of the leaders who openly advocated Dalits to write in English so that the stories are read by all. Now, this Kothari talks about was the solid foundation of Dalit life stories. So it was Ambedkar as a leader who promoted, who first promoted the Dalits to write in, to write itself, to write out their life stories. And second, it was again he who uh, encouraged them to write their life stories and get it translated into English. Now Ambedkar was not merely talking about translation. He used English translation to form his own understanding of caste system. You know, and um, in his well-known essay, Who Were the Shudras, Ambedkar addresses those critics who had accused him of ignorance in Sanskrit and declared his unsuitability in, uh, to interpret scriptures. So he too himself wrote in English or he interpreted Sanskrit uh, scriptures into. Um, he admits the role of English as a medium through which he could access Sanskrit text and declares that the want of knowledge of Sanskrit need not therefore be a bar to my handling such a theme uh, such as the present. So this is this was his perspective of using English to understand the elite texts. Thus, through theory and practice, Ambedkar supported the articulation of Dalit struggle and its expression or translation into English. Ambedkar also initiated a move to include Dalits within the educational system and created a tradition of affirmative action that continues even today, um, wherein even, even uh, though there were valid objections from the upper class and privileged, and privileged classes, Ambedkar tried his level best to bring Dalits into the educational system. And out of the constituencies carved out of Ambedkar's effort, some exposed to the glory, some of the Dalits were 
exposed to education or the glory of the alphabet and thus they wrote their own autobiographies or life stories and got it printed or translated into english now that is ambedkar's role in the dalit expression in english now caste in an alien language or in english language is very interesting according to kothari the history of relationship between english and india reveals several stage, stages of ambivalence because of obviously we all know that english was a colonial instrument a colonial language it is a, it was an alien language however others argue that english might have lost that taint of colonial legacy these days you know like the lit writers like nirav patel acknowledge the fact that english as a foster tongue has given them an cutting edge when compared to their own mother tongue some argue that english has lost its upper hand and become democratic and accessible you know and in the process of becoming more available its vocabulary syntax accent all this has shifted you know and um english language has become more inclusive as dalit texts are increasingly translated into english they bring to english a working class register you know a shock of idiom and sentiment the dalit texts bring into english um a feel of um uh, a feel of emotion a feel of um you know inner sentiments of the dalit right and it is at this moment or it is it is at this scenario that nirav patel as he says uh, writers like him they say goodbye to their mother tongue and um they happily embrace the foster tongue that is english and this idea of the new idea of a mother tongue or the new idea of a foster tongue is widespread and very popular among the dalit writers today now patel gives two reasons for this one because standard indian languages are carved out of reality or the convenience of hegemonic sections or the elite sections and they do not reflect the disempowered sections so the standard indian languages they only reflect the elite indian life the dalits have no space there second the disempowered groups or maybe the marginalized groups effort involved in learning such standard registers is as strange and as difficult as their attempt to learn english so the dalits or the marginalized they have to spend the same amount of uh, you know the, the the they have to spend the same amount of time and strain to study uh, the standard indian languages just as they study english so patel aims to show that many languages that exist even what is officially the same language you know this establishes a context of english language whose cultural difference with the dalit is no more marginalizing than an indian language so we have a situation today where indian languages the mother tongue itself is marginalizing their own people only because they have a dalit identity so a marathi or a gujarati dalit writer is pushed out of their mother tongue saying that you cannot learn the standard mother tongue which is only available for the elite um you know the the elite people of that state so this is where the importance of english arises this is where the dalits who have no space in the standard indian english uh, the standard indian languages they opt for english thus saying goodbye to their mother tongue and taking english as the 
so patel also talks about his memories of standard gujarati wherein there were certain sounds that he could not even pronounce properly because such sounds were not used by his community and it took the teacher a while to make him understand how to pronounce those sounds and the teacher compared it to a sweet a very expensive sweet which starts with that sound and that made it all the more difficult for him as a small boy to grasp it or comprehend it because he had never eaten that sweet in his life because it was that expensive so for him the standard gujarati the standard mother tongue was as difficult or as expensive as that sweet that he could not taste so for him for patel the mark of a dalit identity was always abusive and the standard gujarati language never gave him space never accepted him as a gujarati so in order to erase that abusive memory you know and also to become a proper gujarati he had to put behind the mother tongue gujarati and he adopted a foster mother you know that is english which he says actually extended to the dalits more justice and empowerment than his own mother because for near of patel his mother tongue gujarati evokes uneasiness and pain it reminds him of his community his village which he has distanced himself because right now he is an urban dalit he lives in a city but still his mother tongue pulls him back so he feels that english is a language of opportunities it empowers the dalits who have no space in their own mother tongue now here we could have we could ask a question as why is english a substitute of the standard in the languages it it could have been french or german now the two reasons that kothari gives here is that french or german do not open up opportunities of economic mobility that english does and they do not constitute a site of aspiration for the upper caste therefore cannot give the dalit a symbolic advantage over the upper caste so the main reason here is that french and german are not known by all and of course english is much more widespread among the upper caste and thus if a dalit writes in english even the upper caste can read it or the dalits get a more they get more mobility among the upper caste so thus you know because of this refusal to recognize caste as a priori or as a given no dalit writer questions the choice of english as a target language for their works they readily opt english as a target language for translation because it has a global platform their stories can be read by almost all of the upper class people and very few know french and german but english most of the indians in india and the other people outside the foreigners as well uh, they 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 do know how to comprehend english so their stories are well read around the globe